Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Rhythm Fighter for the Nintendo Switch. Now, Rhythm Fighter was released on January 14th of 2021, and its regular list price is $16.99. So as we go through the review, if you end up liking what you see, please do hit the like button. It really does help out a lot. And consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. Now, the best way to describe the game type of Rhythm Fighters is it's a 2D side-scrolling roguelite rhythm-based beat em up now if that seems like a lot of different type of game types that's because it is however spoilers rhythm fighter actually does manage to combine all those different types into a pretty cohesive game format now storyline wise rhythm fighters is pretty straightforward and simple commander chaos has come to earth and transformed all the vegetables on earth into his evil minions using the dark beat energy but all hope isn't lost because Mr. Disco, coming from that same alien planet, has come using the light beat energy to transform the animals on Earth into protectors. Now, storyline-wise, it really doesn't go any deeper than that. However, there are some very comical one-liners that some characters will throw out through the gameplay and little tidbits of storyline here and there. But there isn't much storyline and basically this game isn't supposed to have much because it's really focused around hardcore gameplay. Now if we talk about the basic gameplay in the game, there are two different control methods. There is what's considered the standard control method and the advanced control method. Now the advanced control method has you basically controlling all the actions facing to the left with the d-pad and all the actions facing to the right with the action buttons. It is fairly more difficult to basically master, but if you do end up mastering it, it generally becomes much more efficient. However, myself, I focused more on the standard control method, and I think most people will. And basically, the only thing that changes is that you have to face your character in one direction or the other using the joystick, and then you use the action buttons to apply the actions in whichever direction you're facing. The reason it winds up being less efficient is that if you're surrounded by enemies on both sides, well, you have to take the time to basically face your character in the right direction before taking action. Now, action-wise, they are pretty simple and straightforward. The Y button is your basic attack button. The X is your alternate action or support attack button. The A button will be each character's individual special ability. And the B button will be your dodge or roll ability. And lastly, the R button is used to basically hop your character forward one space in whichever direction it's facing. Now, although the basic actions are pretty simple, what basically makes this game a challenge is that everything has to be done in rhythm to the music. So if you hop forward in rhythm to the music, you'll hop quicker and more efficiently than if you don't. If you attack in rhythm to the music, you'll do more damage than if you're not in rhythm and so forth for your alternate weapon, special ability, and even the dodge roll will give you a moment of invincibility if you're rolling in basically sync with the music. And trust me, with the fights getting pretty frantic and basically having to alternate between all the different actions, keeping in perfect sync with the music becomes very, very challenging very quickly. Now, if you remember at the beginning, I did say that this game is a roguelite. So if you're unfamiliar with the term, basically that means that every time you start up the game, each map will be procedurally generated. So even which stage you'll be starting from will vary from playthrough to playthrough. All the enemies, all the items you'll pick up won't be the same each time you're playing the game. So basically, to get a very successful run quickly in the game, you will also have to depend somewhat on luck. However, what helps you progress through the game, as in a regular roguelite fashion, is every time you have an unsuccessful run, you nonetheless acquire currency and basically what's called trophies that will help you advance in the game by unlocking new abilities, being able to level up your characters, and even unlock new playable characters. Also, as you're playing through each stage, you'll be picking up coins to actually buy different items because you can come across, once again, procedurally generated vendors that are selling more powerful weapons for your character to equip on the Y button, more powerful alternate weapons for the X button. You'll also get random drops every time you successfully clear a screen. 
But do keep in mind that what will be consistent is whichever stage you face first, the enemies will be weaker, have less HP if you face them in as the first stage than if you face them as the last and fifth stage. So ultimately, every time you play through the game, you'll eventually see all the bosses, even if you don't make it past the first two or three stages. As usual, I like to start with the things that I really appreciated about Rhythm Fighters. And the first thing that I really liked about the game is the overall graphical presentation. The characters are done in a very cartoony, over-the-top fashion, but it really works throughout the game and is very consistent from character to character. So even going with the smallest and simplest enemy in the game, there's a lot of personality and design that have been put into each, each individual character and each individual enemy design. And also what's really appreciated is although all the graphical designs are very cohesive and all of the enemies sort of feel like they fit together, they are at the same time very distinct. So no matter how crazy things get and how many enemies pop up on the screen, it's really easy to quickly identify each different type of enemy and know what tactics you should employ to basically confront them. Also, the control schematics that the game are offering are really appreciated. The fact that they thought of two different schematics, one for someone that really wants to go hardcore and really deep into the gameplay, or someone who just wants to experience a fun time with the game, was really appreciated. Because the dedication it would take to learn the advanced controls would mean a ton, ton of failed attempts at the beginning. However, even though no one should expect to finish this game on their first try, the standard control schematic does allow you to pick up the basics of the game pretty quickly as long as you can at least follow the beat from time to time. Also, this being a rhythm game, the overall music design was even more important than usual. And on the music side, this game really delivers. Number one, it is strongly recommended to play with earphones and to really turn the music up to help you follow the beat. And if you do so, it really will help you. But even though matching the beat is what's most important, what's really interesting is that they've matched up perfectly the music with each different stage. If you're playing through an Asian stage, the music will have an overall Asian feeling to it. If you're playing through a city stage, it'll have a more urban feel to it. And also the rhythm that you'll have to employ for each different stage and each different mu background music will be very, very different from one to another, forcing you to adapt from stage to stage. And these are all elements that I really love because that means they went all, all in on this whole rhythm based idea. Now, finding elements about this game that I actually didn't like is a little bit of a difficult feat because overall, I do find that this game was a very pleasing experience. However, if I had to point to one element that sometimes really would just be annoying was the procedurally generated layout of the different stages sometimes did become a little bit frustrating. Now, although this element wasn't consistent, so sometimes the layout felt pretty okay having you backtrack only once or twice. There are a few times where I would play through a stage and I would backtrack almost four or five times on the stage trying to find the correct path. And it just ended up becoming frustrating in those stages and basically playing through a bunch of dead ends. So I would have appreciated an algorithm that would have nonetheless given a little bit more consistency to the overall layout or the number of dead ends that could be generated. Now, just before we get to the verdict, there are a few final thoughts I want to share with all of you. Number one, I consider myself pretty awful at rhythm based games. Rhythm is definitely not my strong suit. So just before we get to the verdict, there are a couple of final thoughts I wanted to share with you. Number one, I consider myself pretty terrible at rhythm based games. However, that doesn't mean I don't love them because I'm a person that I like to challenge myself with things that I'm not necessarily innately good at. So this is sort of a warning that if you yourself know that you find rhythm based games difficult and you don't necessarily appreciate the challenge or you've just never played a rhythm based game, just be aware that this game takes the rhythm concept very, very seriously. And if you want to become efficient in this game, you have no choice but to adapt to it. However, at the same time, the game does offer a fair amount of elements to progress through it, like leveling your characters, basically buying power-ups and, and things like that. So if you put enough hours into it, even if you don't get excellent at the rhythm, 
and I'm the perfect example of that, you'll eventually still manage to finish the game. It's just that someone who will finish it on their 10th or 15th run will generally be someone who is rhythmly inclined. Someone who is less rhythmly inclined will probably have to wait till his 50th or 100th run to actually manage to finish the game. Also, a last tiny point I wanted to discuss is the pricing of this game. At $16.99, for what the game is offering, I do find it a tiny bit pricey. I would have felt more comfortable this game being closer to the $10 mark than to the $20 mark, especially with some of the other games that have come out recently that have similar overarching styles. Like just to name one quickly would be Scott Pilgrim The Complete Edition, which is around $15. It's a beat em up and it will probably cater to a wider audience. Of course, it doesn't have the rhythm component, but at the same time, I do think that it puts this game in an odd situation currently with some of the other offerings at similar prices. But ultimately, it isn't clearly too expensive. I just think that this game would have been way easier to recommend as a definite purchase closer to the $10 mark. So overall, we're at the verdict. Now, if this is the first video of mine that you watch, I just let you all know that I do not give numerical scores. I give an overall statement on my position on purchasing the game. If you want to see what all those statements are, they're in the description of the video down below. Now, overall, I really did enjoy Rhythm Fighter, so I'm going to be giving this game a definite pickup. Overall, this game manages to mesh together three to four gameplay types that on the surface don't feel like they should go together. However, my previous warning does stand. This is a hardcore rhythm game, so make sure that you're up for the challenge. So that's pretty much it for my review of Rhythm Fighter. I hope you appreciated the review. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I try to answer as many as possible. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you did like this review, please do hit that like button. It does help out a lot. Consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.